So today I am sharing with you a book haul from my visit to Nashville, Tennessee. If you follow my channel, you know from the last video that I took my son to a music camp in Nashville, Tennessee. And while he was at the camp, my husband and I just made it a little mini vacation. Well, we didn't really do anything in the city really, but go to used bookstores and little free libraries. Now this is not about the little free libraries. This is just the used bookstores, but we had such a great time or I had a, such a great time because he's not much of a reader, but he enjoyed it too, just getting away and spending time together. So we went to several bookstores. Um, there was a bookstore called McKay's that one of my viewers had told me about. So thank you for sharing that with me because I jotted that one down and we went there and then we went to several other bookstores. So I have a huge box here of all kinds of books and things that I picked up along the way. And it is a lot of books. And I am a person that is pretty self-disciplined. I keep to my routine. I try to watch what I eat and <laughs> I do all these things. But when it comes to books, I am out of control. I just, when I go into a bookstore, I just, I'm so excited about the books. I just lose myself <laughs> in buying books. And when I'm on vacation, it's worse because I have my husband with me and he lets me just buy them. I mean, he's like, yeah, pick that up. And I do. I pick. I picked up a bunch. So when we went to these bookstores, I didn't go to any new bookstores. I went to all thrift stores and used bookstores because that's, if you follow my channel, you know that's what I enjoy. And so that's what these are. So we went to McKay's, which is is similar to what we have here called Second and Charles. It's a secondhand bookstore, but there's other things there too. And Second and Charles, though, is a little different in that McKay seems to have more things that they sell. At Second and Charles, they sell new books, but they sell mostly used books. That's mostly what it is. But they also have a section of uh, CDs and vinyl records and um, DVDs and a few uh, musical instruments and some gaming equipment. But at McKay's, it is two stories, or the one I went to in Nashville is two stories. The whole top floor was DVDs and albums and anything music related. And I think in the corner was the graphic novel section. And then on the bottom is one whole half of it is used books, which of course I love. And then there was a section of used board games and used puzzles, which I loved too, because we are huge board game people here. And I love old vintage board games, just like I love vintage books. And I like puzzles. And so that was kind of different because Second and Charles has puzzles and games, but they're all new. This was used, so I just found that a treasure. And then they also had a section of DVDs, but theirs were, I thought they were categorized a little bit better than Second and Charles. Second and Charles has basic genres, but this was more like classic black and whites, that kind of thing. And that would help me because that's the kind of movies I'm looking for. So it, it saved me some time so I didn't have to look at all those other uh, DVDs. Anyway, I really enjoyed it. McKay's was a hit for me and I really enjoyed that store. And then we went to another, a couple of other bookstores. One of them I really enjoyed that was down this little street, um, tucked away basically. I think I found it by Google search. It was to the ceiling, piled high with books. I loved this store. It was not a huge store, but I loved it. My husband didn't really enjoy it because it was hard to maneuver. There were so many books, there was no way to see everything. But for me, I enjoyed it because I love being surrounded by books. And I just had this feeling that there were some great treasures to be found in this this bookstore because there were, like I said, all the way to the ceiling, just piles of old used books. So I loved that store too. But again, it was kind of hard to see in there. So I didn't pick up but a couple of books in that store. But my favorite store was this one. I think it was called Happy Books. And the commenter, when I found it on, I just, you know, looked up bookstores in my area on the internet, there was a commenter that said, this store is actually in this antique store 
in this little strip mall. So I knew when I saw the antique store that it was actually a booth inside the store. And what it is, is it's several booths throughout the store. It kind of goes around the store. And on the ends of each aisle, there are the, these paperbacks in these little plastic sleeves. And so just tons of them. I was just amazed at how many there were. A lot of Pulp Fiction and, um, you know, best-selling authors of that time. Any kind of vintage book you wanted, you could, you could find. And it was really organized to be an antique store because a lot of times these thrift stores, these antique stores that I go to, everything's just kind of together, especially when I find books in an antique store. They just have all the vintage books together. They're not, there's no rhyme or reason. They're not organized in any kind of way. But this guy, whoever had done this, whoever sells these at Happy Books or whatever, they had everything organized by either a genre or mainly by an author. So I hit the mother load in some of those books. I, I really found some good ones. So anyway, I don't remember exactly where I, I got everything from. Oh, and I got, went to half price books too. I'd never been to a half price books. I've seen them, but I've never been to one of those. And they have a lot of new and some used, but they had great, uh, great prices on their books. So I really enjoyed uh, being in there too. And so I'll show you what I got. So in the the Happy Books antique store, I picked up most of these books. But again, some of the others came from other places. But I picked up this Everyman's Library. It's one of those pocket books from Everyman's Library. And this one's called Comic Books. Last month, I read the Wordsworth collection in this edition. And when I saw, not comic books, <laughs> comic poems, when I saw this little book, I thought that would be a great one to add. I like the feel of these because I can throw this in my purse and just take it with me. So I'm going to try these out. I was excited to get this one. I don't know where I'm going to put these as I go. Uh, then I found this one. I think I found this one at that one store that had so many books everywhere. This is a Charles Dickens that I do not own. I'm trying to collect all the Charles Dickens books. It's not one of his novels. It was a book he wrote for his children, and it's called The Life of Our Lord. And I just thought this was a great copy of that. So I'm going to add this to my Charles Dickens collection. Um, and then the other book, I, I only bought two in that store, and that one and this one, What Jane Austen Ate and Charles Dickens Knew by Daniel Poole. I heard uh, of this book at during Nonfiction November, and I also heard someone was going to read this for Jane Austen July. So I thought I might put this one up for Nonfiction November. I've, I've been interested in this. I'd heard of it before. So as soon as I saw this great copy of it, I picked it up too. Again, these are all used books, so they weren't that expensive at all. I found a copy of Agatha Christie's The Murder on the Links. I don't have this one. I found a copy of Dostoevsky's The Brothers... How do you say that? Karaz, Kar, Karamazov? I don't know how to say it. <laughs> I don't even know what this is about. But I do want to read some Dostoevsky because I've never read any. And next year, that's one of my goals, is to pick up something by him. And this one was in the, one of the thrift stores. So I thought, one day, it's one of those one day books, because it's quite a chunker. So we'll see how that goes. I picked that up because it was super cheap. Um, I picked up this book just because of the title and I like the way it looked. It's called The Carolinians by Jane Berry, a novel of love and war. I think this is set during the Revolutionary War in the Carolinas. And since I'm a Carolinian, it caught my eye. Uh, she's on the back, Jane Berry. I've never heard of her, but she is beautiful. See that picture? I just loved it. So anyway, I just picked that up because I loved the cover and it was super cheap. Um, then I picked up another Phyllis Whitney, Woman Without a Past. I've never read this one, but I do enjoy Phyllis Whitney. She has a, she's similar to Daphne du Maurier with, um, hers are more just romantic suspense, but they have a little bit of a gothic feel to them a lot of times. And so I enjoy her work. So I picked that one up. This one was brand new. It's Louisa May Alcott's Christmas Treasury, and I'm always looking for Christmas short stories. During the 
month of December, I read a lot of short stories because I'm busy and I, I don't like to commit to a lot of longer books. But I do like to keep these just around and I'll have them sitting around as part of my decorations really for Christmas. So I thought this would be a good one for uh, to add to that collection. In McKay's too, well, I'll hold this to last. I'll, say, I'll tell you that in just a minute. Um, this was another one I found. It's called Exiled from Earth by Ben Bova. I have no idea what this is, but it's a sci-fi and I loved the cover. It's not very long, but I thought it might be a good one, kind of a pulp fiction type. I read Donovan's Brain years ago and I don't know why I was even interested in reading that. It's super dumb, but I loved it. I just thought it was so much fun. And it's pulp fiction, it's science fiction. And this just gave me that kind of feel. So I thought maybe this will be another great surprise like Donovan's Brain. So I picked it up. It was, again, super cheap. Um, and then I found this. I was really excited about this because I don't have this one yet. This is Wives and Daughters by Elizabeth Gaskell. And this was actually the edition I wanted. So I was happy to find this one. It's a great copy. It hasn't been marked in. There's no notes in it or anything like that. Again, super cheap. I found another classic, The Return of the Native by Thomas Hardy. This is the Wordsworth Classics. Um, I love that cover. I thought that was really pretty. But I haven't read any Thomas Hardy. Um, I've kind of been avoiding Thomas Hardy because I've heard that he's a little depressing. <laughs> so I haven't read any, but I do want to eventually. So I'll pick that up. This one I picked up because I've heard other people talk about it somewhere. It's the Peterkin Papers by Lucretia Hale. Look at that on the back. I just loved that picture on the back of it. But this was a hardcover. Just picked it up because it looked interesting. I just, like I say, I go crazy. I just lose all sense of reality when I'm in these stores. Um, in that one store that I was talking about, the Happy Books in that antique store, I did pick up a couple of the paperbacks that were in the sleeves. I, well, I wasn't going to get these because I have both of these books, but my husband saw how excited I was about them, so he put them in my cart. Uh, this is Ray Bradbury's Fahrenheit 451. I loved this little pocketbook. And then Agatha Christie's And Then There Were None. Look at that. Oh, I was so excited about this. These are just fantastic. I think these were my favorites to find because I love these little vintage copies. They're just precious. So I have those. Did I need them? Uh, no, but I pick, picked them up anyway. All right, let's see what else. Um, oh, I found this. I've been wanting to read this. I've seen this movie, of course, years ago, but they had a great copy of Chitty Chitty Bang Bang by Ian Fleming, and I just loved that. Isn't that the cutest thing? And it's this hard copy of it. I also found some Kipling. I found these at McKay's, and it was two. I've never read Jungle Books or anything like that. So this was Volume 1 is um, a selection of his stories and poems. That's Volume 1. And then Volume 2 is selections and stories and poems. So it's two volumes of just uh, different poems, I mean, stories and poems by Kipling. And so I haven't read any Kipling, so I thought that these would be great to add to my bookshelf. I have too many books here. Okay, so then, what else do I have? Oh, I picked up a lot of Ray Bradbury. If you follow my channel, you know that I love his work. Um, I've read several things by Ray Bradbury, but now I want to read all of his short stories. And so I found several, and they were, again, super cheap, and they're hardcover. This one is the Cat's Pajamas short story collection. Um, I had never heard of this one, the Toynbee Convector. It's got a weird um, cover on that one. Again, hard cover. Uh, from the Dust Return, this one Art told me about. I'll leave a link to his channel below. I think this is the one. Art, if you're watching, I think you told me about this one. From the Dust Return, Art's read every single thing by Ray Bradbury, so he'll know where I should start with these. Uh, the Graveyard for Lunatics. 
And then I picked up the Illustrated Man because this is the edition I wanted. I have a soft cover of it, a paperback edition of the Illustrated Man. But when we were reading that, we were buddy reading that, um, I noticed that some of the stories were not in that collection. And this one is the original collection. So I, want, I definitely wanted to get another copy. And this is a hardcover and it's in great shape. And look at that great picture of Ray Bradbury on the back. I loved that too. So I was happy to get this. Again, super cheap. These were super cheap. So it was funny. My, my husband was walking around the antique store just looking at other things. He came back to find me and I had all those Ray Bradbury books in my hand and he said, what do you have? I said, I'm buying every one of them. And he was like, okay. So he was he was just laughing at me because he knows how much I've, I've been wanting to collect Ray Bradbury books. Uh, if you're not familiar with his books, he wrote uh, Fahrenheit 451, which is his most famous, but he also wrote a lot of short stories. And his short stories are amazing. They're, they talk about things, there are a lot of sci-fi, a lot of them are science fiction, but they talk about things, he wrote them like in the 1950s, and many of the things have come to pass. And that's why I just find it interesting that he was so ahead of his time. And he really was a person that, he was super observant and really watched people and wrote a lot about human nature. And I just find those things fascinating. So I love Ray Bradbury. So I'm excited about those. Then I also picked up a couple of other just fun things like this was a uh, puzzle that I found, super cheap. And I just thought that was so cute. I do like to, to do puzzles. A lot of times I'll put an audio book in and I'll do a puzzle. And Angela Harding is like my favorite illustrator uh, artist. And I found an Angela Harden. This one's called The Common. And this was at that Half Price Books. And I actually wanted this. I've had this on my wish list for a while. And it was half price. So I went ahead and picked it up. It was brand new. And then I found at McKay's, I mentioned that they had a great classics DVD section. I found another James Stewart movie. If you follow my channel, you know that my son and I are trying to watch all the Jimmy Stewart movies because we both are big fans of James Stewart. And this is one that uh, you, as one of you did, well, I think several of you mentioned this one in the comments to get, and that is The Shop Around the Corner. And I've never watched that one. I know that You've Got Mail is based on this. It's like a retelling of this movie. So, I, of course, I want to watch it. And, of course, it's James Stewart. So, they had this one at McKay's, so I picked it up while I could find it. And so this will be one that I watch hopefully during the month of August because I want to get to that one too. So those are the books that I picked up while I was away in Nashville. I did pick up a few at the Little Free Library. I'll show in a different um, uh, video. But those are the ones that I picked up. Lots of fun. We had a great time going to all the different thrift stores and uh, used bookstores. My favorite was Happy Books in that antique store because I love vintage books. And that, whoever owns that, kudos to you because you have a great selection. Loved it. If you're ever in Nashville, Tennessee, I highly recommend McKay's. Um, I'll try to write down all the names of these bookstores because I can't remember all their names. And the one, the Happy Books in the antique bookstore. Definitely check that out if you're in that area. So those are the books that I picked up while in Nashville at some of these secondhand bookstores. Had a great time doing it. Have you read any of these? Let me know that in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.